All right. I hope you all enjoyed that introduction for this build. That took a little while to put together. But in this one, I'm going to be showcasing this massive spaceship that I built in Fallout 76. And as you can see, yes, I did make this right by the Scorch Beast Queen. I placed it where it'd be far enough from someone nuking my camp in the process of spawning the Scorch Beast Queen. Because as we know, nukes go off a lot to get this beast to come out. I mean, don't get me wrong. Someone could possibly still hit my base if they really, really wanted to. But typically, players don't place their nuke that far up. That'd just make the Scorch Beast Queen a tougher fight. Because you'd have to be fighting in radiation as well. And that gets rid of most melee bloody builds helping. Because most are running around with a meat hook. Not in power armor or a radiation suit. Actually, believe it or not, what happened over me placing my camp next to the Scorch Beast Queen fight gave me more customers. I got more traffic and more sales. Because after we got done fighting the Scorch Beast Queen, a lot of players would just come over to my camp to check it out. So yeah, keep that in mind. If you place your camp over near the Scorch Beast Queen fight, not technically where you'd get nuked every time in the process of getting her to spawn, but over kind of by it, you can get more sales. At least from my experience I did. Anyways, now let's go ahead and get into a tour of the spaceship. As you can see, here's an outer view of it. We got three thrusters and one mega booster on the back that was created by a bunch of light boxes as you can see and the thrusters were made by one small generator and believe it or not icicle lights that's what gives this the thruster look and uh, the small generator just creates a smoke effect where it looks like you know they're working in a sense also, as for the wings, they were made from roofs and half walls. I'll get more into them later in this tour. I'll actually go on top of the ship to give you all a better point of view. Anyways, let me go ahead and move on to the front side of the ship. And by the way, as you can see, it is completely floating, which I'll be showing how to do that at the end of this tour. Hopefully this doesn't get patched because it's not technically game breaking. It's not something like a duplication glitch, you know. It's just a neat little exploit in the game that allows us to make what you see here, a spaceship. So, yeah, that's an outer view of this. Now let's go ahead and take a tour on inside. Hopefully you guys like this and get a little bit of inspiration out of this build for yourself that you could build in Fallout 76. So some of you might be wondering how exactly do you get inside this spaceship? And, well, yeah. That's the downfall of creating floating bases. I mean, I could technically place a staircase here at this door that leads down to a platform, but if I did that, I would not be able to delete that staircase. I'd have to restart this whole build. I wanted to make this look like it's completely floating and flying through the sky. This is typically how it's set up. I normally have this foundation right here to get in. Wow, he just ran and jumped that. Can I get in like that? What the fudge? That dude just hopped over the foundation and went right inside. Well, that kind of uh, made me look like a liar. Let, let me just say, it's just difficult to get in without something to help you on up inside. And the reason why I chose this door is because I felt like it blended well with the metal walls. And I had to use these rusted walls at the top to create windows up there that we can look out from. Also, the cockpit as well. So yeah, let's go ahead and take a tour inside now. So here's the bottom half of the spaceship. Nothing special going on down here. This is basically like the engine room and the room to power everything. Over here I got a, a tinkers, some toolboxes, and a fusion generator to power everything inside. But on up in the second level here, we got of course a porta potty. Because when you gotta go, you gotta go. I always have to make a place to use the restroom at. I just feel like that helps with realism. Anyways, over here, we got a little hangout spot. As you can see, when you go to sit down, you get a perfect view outside of this window here. And by the way, I used black wallpaper on the inside. I felt like it blended well in here. And for the flooring here, this was actually something free that we got inside the Atom Shop a while back. As you can see, this is a Vault Tech Starburst floor style and this is a orange shag carpet flooring style so in case you're interested in any of those also on my display case here I made sure to stick with the theme as you can see I got a tinfoil hat a sentry bot an alien a space helmet 
a toy rocket ship, and a restored desk fan. So, yeah, that's this side. On this side, this is my vending machine area. I went ahead and placed my Nuka Girl sign right by the vending machine to attract people's eyes a little bit when they come up into the spaceship. Also, so people can find my vending machine a little quicker. I mean, I don't know. It might work. It might not. Also, I just feel like the Nuka Girl really suits being up in a spaceship. After all, that's her style. Also, I got a little Mr. Pebbles plushie right here with a Mr. Pebbles sign. <laughs> oh, which, by the way, this is on sale in the Atom Shop currently, in case you want to get this for yourself. So, yeah, that's what's going on here. This is the entrance to the cockpit where... You know, the spacemen would fly this spaceship. This is what I got going on inside the cockpit. This was very, very tricky to make. Actually, my buddy on Xbox that goes by Mystic Storm 9431 decorated this cockpit. She did a really good job with getting the theme together. Really good job. But yeah, this is what it looks like when you take a seat. You can see out the windows pretty nicely. Actually, you know what? I'm now in build mode. Let me go ahead and show you what was all used, in case you may want to use this for yourself in one of your builds. As you can see, we have a conduit switch on each side. Also, some conduits that connect to each of the switches. A safe in the center. Table in the back with the terminal glitched inside the table. Some file cabinets flipped around and lockers on each side as well light boxes up here that have different colors on them a clock in the center and the 14th letter in the greek alphabet so the xi sign in the greek letterings also of course all this was placed on a rug so we could glitch it inside this small of an area in case some of you may be wondering about that that's the reason why there's a rug down here got some airplane seats for, of course, the pilot seats. I mean, that makes sense. Also behind us here, we got some file cabinets, as well as, once again, we had to use a rug to get these in this close, sadly. This is a very, very close corridor, so we had to use the rug glitch quite a bit to get things to fit. But uh, yeah, that's what's going on inside the cockpit. Of course, all the signs that you see around are pretty much space-like, <laughs> so yeah. We got the drive in and fly out light up poster board here inside this area. Anyways, moving on. Oh, what the heck. <laughs> nice. Stark <laughs> giving me a salute. <laughs> that was perfect. So, yeah, that's this area. Now, let's go ahead and move back into the kitchen area. What the heck's going on here? This helmet and bodies for some reason phasing out of the portable toilet. That was weird. Anyways, back here is the eating area as well as the sleeping chambers. As you saw at the end of the cinematic, everyone just went to bed after taking out the Scorch Beast Queen. <laughs> Zombie in here taking a little snooze. Which, by the way, the introduction cinematic for this camp build, I try to make it seem like these people on the spaceship came here to take out the Scorch Beast Queen to protect Earth. I don't know if that got the point across, but that's what I was going for. And also, I had to go with the classic Halo-themed music, because that's one of the games that I grew up playing the most. I absolutely adore Halo. Anyways, yeah, this is the eating area. And back here are just some more bunks for people to sleep in. Nothing too crazy going on inside here. Once again, we had to glitch certain things in here to get it to fit. As you can see, this is placed under a mat. And then we just move the mat, and that also moves the object here. So it helps you place certain things where 
technically certain things shouldn't go. If that makes sense. Yeah, oh, forgot about this room too. Pretty much just the same thing going on. A place where a person would store their clothes at, a place to sleep, and whatnot. You know, the essentials. So, yeah, that's the inside, guys. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you the frame of this ship, just in case you may want to try to replicate this for yourself. As you can see, there was a lot of roofing that was used for this. This was actually really, really tricky to make. Really tricky. Like I mentioned before at the beginning of this tour, I'd give you all a closer look at these thrusters here. As you can see, that's what it looks like in case you may want to try to replicate this. Also, as I mentioned before, that small generator is what's creating the smoke effect. I didn't get the Halloween smoke screen, so I just utilized with what I could. Plus, I think the Halloween smoke screen might add a little bit too much smoke, where it seems like our thrusters are about to blow up. <laughs> so, I guess in a way, this small generator worked perfectly. Anyways, moving on from that, as you can see, here's the wing. So how each wing is done, I have a roof connected up to this wing, as well as two wall slants on the outside of the roof in the middle. So yeah, that's how the wings work. And uh, by the way, that opening there is how I got on top of the ship. I had a store of roof, so don't think that was technically always there. But yeah, this is my spaceship, everyone. I was extremely excited to share this with you all when I seen how much attention my tweet got a few days ago on January 26th. As you can see, the tweet got a good amount of support, and a lot of people were wanting to see a tour of this. Highly appreciate it. Which, by the way, since I'm on the topic of my Twitter, if you want to follow it, I'll have a link down below in the description for you all to go check that out. I'm highly active on there. I guess now I should show you all how you make your camp float. I'm sure a lot of you are curious about that aspect. So you can attempt at a spaceship for yourself. Okay, so first off, I gotta give credit where credit is due. I ran into this guy in Fallout 76 named Chevy Z28 Camaro. And I noticed that he had a floating spaceship. And I was like, wow, that's awesome. I wanted to attempt it myself, so as you can see, I sent him a message asking how'd you get it to float, and he told me he could show me, which was pretty cool of him. Also, I just looked it up recently on YouTube. I am not the first person to upload this floating camp glitch. Believe it or not, this has been going on for like a year or so in the game. This has been available for players for quite some time. So honestly, on that note, I don't think Bethesda is going to technically remove this from the game. I think they see how it gives more creativity for players. And it's not technically that, that game-breaking. It's not really affecting other players, nor the economy. It's just an exploit in the game at the moment. It's not like we're hacking here and stealing people's inventories. But uh, yeah, anyways, now let's go ahead and get into how you do this. You just simply have to place two platforms, and then this kind of staircase on the two platforms. And once you do that, you just simply place one of these posts on the outside here it may take a minute to get it to show up green as you can see there it goes I'm actually gonna place it over here because that's kinda close to the barrier and once you do that which by the way that's the most important step you then can place another staircase down now you can just simply delete what you just placed and voila we got a floating camp it's that easy. Oh, by the way, you can delete these foundations as well. The tricky part is, though, you're going to really want to know what exactly you're building. You want to plan out what you're going to be placing and how you're going to be placing them. Because, oh, what the heck? Did I really just do that too close to the tree? Actually, you know what? I know what's going on. The reason why it won't let me place anything at the moment down here is because you have to build another staircase. If you noticed in my spaceship, there were two staircases, and that's the reason why. You have to build another one, and now you can connect the flooring, as you can see. And this is what I was about to be mentioning to you all previously. You want to make sure you have your flooring down. You want to be sure you know what you're going to be building when you, know, you start connecting the pieces. The reason why is because, well, look, you can't delete it once it's placed. This is what pops up. Cannot remove item. Part of the structure would not be accessible. And yeah, I can't delete any of these pieces. So you gotta be really careful on how you're placing things. I suggest honestly to just go at it and try to do your build and then delete it and then try again until you finally get down a build that you're actually wanting to be 
in the air and yeah that's how you do it guys really simple and like i mentioned before there are plenty of other tutorials on youtube i know for instance one guy that uploads pretty good camp builds as well he goes by sinister hand he uploaded a tutorial a while back like 10 months ago and recently he just uploaded on how to do this again with the ufo that he built if you haven't checked out sinister hand i highly recommend him he's been a big part of the fox 76 community since the get-go but yeah i guess that's wrapping up this video everyone hopefully you found it enjoyable if you did it would highly be appreciated if you could take a little bit of your time and leave a like and hey maybe possibly share this build around like i mentioned before this took me forever to create you don't even want to know how many times i deleted my structure to do it again to try to get it how i wanted it's been a long time in the making but it's finally now officially out to the public but yeah i'm out of here everyone thanks for taking the time watching and listening until next time peace